I'm going to show you a super easy way to choose the best AI model for time series forecasting using your own data. We'll be working directly in the database with MindCB and I'll walk you through how you can compare three different AI models without having to extract or transform your own data. But first, let's start by talking about what time series forecasting is all about. In simple terms, it's all about using historical data to predict future trends. This is super useful for things like sales predictions, weather forecasts, or even stock prices. Now, there are a lot of AI models out there that can actually help you with this, but I think the key is figuring out which one works best for your specific data. And the good news, you don't need to extract or move your data around to do this. You can experiment with different models directly inside your database using MindsDB, and it makes the whole process faster and easier, and I'm excited to show you how. Now, before we dive into the demo, let's take a moment to introduce MindsDB. MindsDB is an open source AI layer for databases that allows you to apply machine learning directly within your existing database systems. It simplifies the process of training, deploying, and managing machine learning models using standard SQL queries. This means you don't have to extract or move your data anywhere. You can keep everything within your familiar database environment. And if you're interested in exploring more, make sure to check out our GitHub and our documentation in the description below. Next, let's also talk about Nixla. Now, Nixla is a company specializing in open source time series forecasting tools. The models we'll actually be using today are all developed by them. These models range from traditional statistical methods to advanced neural networks and transformer-based models, providing a suite of tools tailored for various time series forecasting needs. Nixla's focus on scalability and performance makes their models a great fit for both small-scale projects and enterprise-level applications. So let's get into this. First, we need some data to work with. In this case, I'm using a demo table called historical expenditures, which contains past spending data. You can kind of think of it like sales data over time. We're going to use this data to train our AI models and make future predictions. And so you can connect to our MySQL database from MindCB using this. By the way, everything in here, all of this code in here will actually be in the link description below. And I'm purposely doing it this way so you don't have to type as I type, make the video a little bit more quicker. And if you want, just get going on your own and ASAP. Anyway, again, these are the credentials you can use to connect to our SQL database. I've already done this, so I'm not going to click run, but we also want to make sure that we can actually connect to the database. So let's go ahead and run this query. Boom. Okay. Let me run it again in front of you. So as you can tell, we are able to access our database. So we're able to access that data. Now, next, before we actually train the models, I think it's important to set up the training data properly. In this case, we're excluding the last 12 months of data from each category. And you might be wondering why. This is because we want to see how well our models can predict these values without having seen them during training. And I think this makes the forecast even more meaningful as we'll be comparing them to actual unseen data. And to do this, we create this view that excludes the last 12 months of data. And again, this query creates a view called training data, which includes all the data except for the months we've listed. And so the models will now train on this data and make predictions for those excluded months. And by doing this, again, we're setting up a real world test. Can our models accurately predict the future based on the past? Once we have the predictions, we'll compare them to the actual values for those months. Now let's move on to setting up the three model, the real exciting part, right? These models each handle time series forecasting in different ways, and I'm gonna break them down real quick. So first, stats forecast. Right, so stats forecast uses traditional statistical models. I think it's fast, accurate, and it is great for scaling. Next, there's neural forecast, which uses neural networks, which are a bit more complex, but can give you better results depending on certain types of data. And last but not least, we have time GPT. Time GPT is a transformer-based model, just like the famous GPT model is used for text, but it's designed specifically for time series data. And so I wanna show you how easy it is to create, train, and deploy these models in MindsDB. So as you can tell, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We create the ML engine neural forecast, and then we create the model as well. Right after, we do the exact same thing for time GPT, and we do the same thing for stats forecast as well. 
Now let's scroll down a little bit. One thing that you can actually do, for example, let me show you something. Show ML engines. So I like to do this just to make sure all the engines I need are there. But for example, we want to make sure stats forecast engine is here, the neural forecast and the time GPT engine is here. And as you can tell, that's all here. And, and, and it's pretty simple. As you can tell, this is all we do to create the models using Minds DB. Pretty simple, right? Now that we've trained our models, it's time to see how they perform against real data. We'll compare the forecast from each model and compare that with the actual historical values. But first, let's make sure to grab the real data that we're using for comparison. And again, just as a reminder, we have already excluded some months from the training data to make sure our models are predicting values they haven't seen before. And here's how we get the real values for these months. So as you can tell, this will give us the actual expenditures for the industry category over those months. But now let's look at how the forecasts actually compare to one another. And first, let's check out the predictions from stats forecasts. Again, this engine uses statistical models that are fast and accurate. And this is how we query the forecast. Let's go ahead and click run. Boom. So as you can tell here, we're able to see the months, the category and the expenditures as well. And if we actually wanted to compare these to the actual data, so let me run this to compare it to actual data. So just look at October. So in October, we see the expenditures at 25,974. And when we run this with the stats forecast model for October, it has that 26,166. Now it's not exactly accurate in its prediction, but it's it looks pretty close. It's not too far off. Next up, we've got neural forecast. Again, this model uses neural network, so it might perform a bit differently. And we pretty much do the exact same thing to actually get its predictions running a very similar query. Boom, right? And then we want to do the exact same thing for time GPT. Again, time GPT is a transformer based model, much like GPT models for text, but specifically designed for time series data. And so we ran this query and again, we're getting the exact same thing, the months category and its prediction. Now that we've looked at the predictions from all three models, let's compare them side by side with the real values. So we can actually calculate the difference between the predicted and actual values to see how accurate each model was. So here, what we're doing down here below is we're actually joining the tables together, all the tables together. Let me go ahead. And again, this will all be in the link description below. Let me go ahead and actually run this. All right, let's see how many seconds it takes. Oh, just under four seconds. So this is amazing. We can see everything for the month category, the true value. And then we also get the value between stats forecasts, neural forecasts and time GPT. And we're going to take a look at this. And with this table, we can actually see how each one performed. And so under the stats forecast differential percentage, the lower the percentage, the better it actually performed. So when we look at stats forecast, we can see that it was less than 1% difference, less than 1%, a little bit over uh, for February, 2017 is close to the 4%, it's a little higher. Same thing with September of 2017. Now let's look at neural forecast. Now, again, remember neural forecast has a wider margin of error, which will in result in higher percentages here. So when we look at neural forecast compared to stats forecast, this is above 2%, 3%, and even at 22%. So as we can tell that when it comes to this particular type of data, neural forecast does not perform particularly as well. And then last but not least, we have time GPT. And by far, if we compare the values between these three, time GPT performed the best. I mean, it, it looks like almost every single one of them by the most part is at close to 1%, if not below 0.12, right? Uh, 1.34, 1.6, 3.24. So when we compare all three of these models, which model actually performed best for our particular data, time GPT wins for sure. Now to wrap this up real quick, again, as we can tell, TimeGPT came out on top as the most accurate model for our data set. But that doesn't mean it will always be the best choice. Stats forecast was also very accurate as well. And depending on the type of data you're working with, neural forecasts might give you better results in more complex scenarios. So when you're choosing the right model for time series forecasting, it's all about testing and seeing what works best for your specific data. MindsDB makes this easy by allowing you to benchmark all these models directly with your 
database. Anyway, I hope that was clear. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Thanks.